Hey there, Heather Liu of Closet Core Patterns coming to you with the next lesson in our Joe Sew Along. So if you are making the Joe dress, you're at the right place. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through how to sew the skirt from start to finish. So we're gonna be using the same slot seam finish we used on our sleeves to finish the center front of the skirt. Otherwise, it's a quicker lesson. It's not gonna take quite so long as the bodice. Uh, so let's get into it. So we have already assembled our bodice and now it's time to assemble the bottom. So whether or not you're sewing the skirt or the pant, the first step of this is the same. And the first step is you're going to be sewing the darts. And I'm going to draw them in for you so you can see. I always mark my dart with a little dot at the end and then I always start the dart, dart with a notch. So I'm just drawing these in for you so you can see them. And the function of a dart is that it gathers fabric and then it releases it, right? So this is how we express um, volume and this is how we shape curves over curved areas. So we're doing that kind of in the tummy area and we like the way that it looks in the final garment, but if you, for whatever reason, don't want that kind of release of volume in your tummy area, you can make these darts smaller. So you could make them, you know, maybe half the size and really have them just really be as like a design line because what's happening on the front of the bodice is we have two darts up here. So the line of this dart matches up with the two darts on the bodice. So we wanna keep that style line, but you could make it narrower. However, keep in mind that if you make that dart smaller, you have to account for the width somewhere. So just make sure, so because we wanna make sure everything matches up, um, in our final garment that these darts line up, that if you end up removing, say, a quarter of an inch in width, that that quarter of an inch ends up getting added to your pocket bag here so that we still have the same length of waist seam. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that if you made any adjustments to the placement of the darts on the bodice, you have to make sure you make the same adjustment on the skirt or on the pants. So if you moved those darts over, you have to make sure that you move them over here. Also, if let's say you used I don't know, you were, great, you were doing some pattern grading and you used uh, the size 16 dart and then you wanted to use the size 14 pant, you have to make sure that you, again, shift those darts over so that they line up. So just make sure maybe you want to go and walk your pattern pieces if you made any adjustments and make sure that those lines are still going to be uh, parallel to each other when we sew the waistband and everything gets finally constructed. So to sew these darts, once again, the same for the pants and the skirt, we're just going to match up at that notch or at the dart leg that I drew in. And then right below the point is where, right below that little mark there is where I put the bottom pin so I know before I get there how I'm gonna trail the stitching off. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other dart and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. So there's gonna be four darts all together that we're sewing. And I will go see you at the machine and show you how we're gonna sew these together. Okay, so here we are at our sewing machine. We're about to sew this dart. So I'm gonna just start right at that notch and I'm gonna backstitch at the end. And then I'm gonna just try to sew in a more or less straight line, but as I approach that little circle mark, the little point marking the end of the dart, I wanna to try to really gradually taper off so that I don't have like a weird angle where the dart at, you know, ends. I want it to kind of try to be as subtle as possible. If you need help sewing darts, we do have a dart post that we can link to below. I'm just, as I'm approaching the end, I'm slowing down. I'm gonna try to hit that circle really close to the edge and then I'm sewing off. And I'm gonna raise my needle, cut off a decent length of thread tail, and then to prevent that dart from unraveling, I'm gonna tie it. and then I can trim this and I'm not gonna worry about my dart point unraveling. So I'll do that for the other dart and then the other side and then I'll meet you back at our pressing station. Okay, so we've sewn those darts and now we wanna press them towards center front. I'm gonna make sure I do that on a tailor's hand. It's gonna help me press that curve in and I wanna come around and do it on the right side as well. 
Right. And now we're ready to attach our pocket. So the pattern piece came with a little interfacing. We want to stabilize that curved pocket opening. Think about all the things you do with your pocket. You're touching it all the time. So a little bit of interfacing will help stabilize it. I just used a little bit of that stay tape that I showed you in the bodice video. So you're welcome to use that or you're welcome to use the included pattern piece. So we're going to turn our pant or our skirt over and we're going to match up the pocket bag. And we're just going to match those curved shapes. And then we're going to go to the machine and sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm, si I'm sewing that curved pocket shape. I'm doing it at 5 eighths right now. Back stitching at the end. And at this stage, you could go and press it, press the seam allowance, but I want to understitch it first. So I'm just going to make sure my seam allowance is pressed to the right side. And I'm going to understitch the pocket bag to that seam allowance. And again, I could press this first, but I'm already here. So I'm just going to understitch it. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm using my hands to pull the part, like keep everything flat so that I'm getting a nice understitch line. And I'm gonna understitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. And just a reminder, if you haven't ever understitched before, understitch helps anchor one layer to a seam allowance, and it's gonna help this pocket from peeking out when you're wearing the pants. So this is a really important step and you shouldn't skip it. And there we go. The pocket bag has now been understitched. This is what it looks like on the other side. And now I'm going to go grade this seam and get ready to attach the other piece of the pocket. Okay, so to help re reduce bulk here, right, because we now have two seams right next to each other, right, we have one and two. Depending on your fabric, you might end up seeing that outline of that seam. And so to, pre to prevent that, I've got a little tongue tied, we're going to grade the seam and grading seams just means that you're trimming one seam shorter than the other. And you always want to trim the one that's furthest away from the outside. So since this is the layer that the world sees, we're going to leave this layer, the, the seam touching that one the longest, and we're going to trim the one closest to the body. So that would be basically the seam allowance of the pocket bag. And so this is where your applique and duckbill scissors come very handy. You can see I could do this with a regular pair of scissors. Just imagine this is a regular pair of scissors right now. Do, 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 do. But as I'm cutting, I might end up accidentally cutting the layer below. Applique scissors are awesome because they basically act as protection. So that wide bit stays there as I'm trimming and helps prevent accidentally trimming the wrong seam. So I'm just going to go ahead and grade this. There we go. So now it's graded. So now it's, you're not going to see that big, thick, hunky theme seam because we're basically angling it so that it's not as thick in one spot. So now we want to just press the pocket bag in place along that seam. And it's probably going to kind of naturally do this, but I always, whenever I'm doing this, try to roll the lining in very slightly, like, you know, a 16th of an inch, less than a millimeter so that you see a little bit of that front leg from the back. And that again, just helps prevent, see if you can see that, that little bit there. Again, it just helps prevent the, the lining from seeing the lining on the inside. Okay, so now we're gonna attach our pocket bag. So take the corresponding bag and it's going to be flat on one side and we are going to just match up this curved shape.
and I'm just pinning the pocket bags together. I'm leaving the leg free or the skirt as it may be. And now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to sew this in one pass at five eighths of an inch. So here we are. I'm going to just sew this at five eighths, back stitching at the end. And as I approach the curve, I want to kind of turn my work here. So I'm going to just try to do this a little bit more slowly as I'm turning the curve. That's the key to sewing curves is you just slow down. And I'm using my left hand to turn it and then my right hand to guide it. And then as we're straightening out, I can speed up again. Back stitching at the end. So that's the pocket. And the pocket is now sewn. I'm going to go to my serger now, which I, we don't have a camera on the serger, but I'll show you what it's going to look like once I finish this edge. So I've gone ahead and I have finished the edge of this pocket bag with some serging. If you don't have a serger, you should finish the edge with either some zigzag stitching or a bias bound or Hong Kong seam. You don't want to leave it raw. And now we are going to baste the pocket in place along the side seams and the top so that this whole thing basically becomes one pattern piece or becomes one piece to manip manipulate and you don't have this kind of bag floating around. So the first thing that we're going to do is just line up the pocket along the side edge. There's a notch there to help you. And then at the top, there's a notch on the pocket bag that should align with the edge of the pocket edge. So I'm going to match those up and then I'm going to in this pocket bag in place along the waist seam. And then I'm just gonna go and baste using long basting stitch a half inch here and here. And then this whole thing can be treated like one. I'm just gonna do a slightly longer stitch here, again at a half inch, and we're doing it at a half inch so that, I'll do it on this side. When we attach the waistband, just in case our stitching isn't super, super perfectly accurate, you're not gonna see this basting line. Back stitch. And then I will baste the side seam in place. So now last step here is just to give everything a nice press. Press that edge, press that top edge. Okay, so if you're making the skirt, we're gonna do a little bit of hemming first. And it might feel counterintuitive. Well, at least we're gonna press up the hem. We're not gonna stitch anything in place. We just want to know where our hem is for the next few steps. So the total seam allowance for the skirt is one inch and three quarters. And we need to press up the first hem a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to press the second hem, uh, the second bit up an inch and a half. So for that first pass, I'm just eyeballing this. But if you want to use your seam gauge to get a perfect quarter of an inch, feel free. And then for that second one, we want to go an inch and a half. So here it's really important that we use the seam gauge to make sure that we're getting a perfect inch and a half. We also have notches marked on the pattern, so you can use the notches, but I'm going to use my seam gauge. There we go. And sometimes you'll get, you'll press it and then it just doesn't, like it looks good here, but right here it got kind of distorted. So I'm just going to come and repress that edge. 
Okay, sorry, you don't want to repeat it for all four pieces. You just want to repeat it for the two front pieces. So I've got the hem pressed in place on both. And then the next thing that we want to do is prepare the skirt insert. And so this is all going to feel very familiar. This is very similar to what we did with the bodice. We are going to press right sides together, one edge, not two this time, one edge in one quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go to the machine and stitch that closed. So just remember, we're basically just anchoring this raw seam in place, but you're not going to see it. It's going to be completely enclosed with bias tape. So it doesn't matter that it's a raw edge. Okay, so now it's time to install that skin, uh, sk skin insert, gross, skirt insert. So I just need you to line up the folded edge of that skirt insert that we just pressed. You're going to line it up with the notch here. And then this should more or less match the length of the skirt. And we're going to go and sew this just like we did with the bodice. We're going to baste this at 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm just basting this in place. So I'm doing a little bit of a longer stitch length and at 3 eighths because I don't want to see it once we attach the bias. And it looks like mine, I think as I was uh, sewing it, it got a little bit stretched out and it's just extending past the notch just by a, a tiny bit. So I'm gonna make sure that when I attach it to the other skirt that I um, line up the skirt insert at the exact same point on the other side, just so everything matches up. Okay, so now we're gonna install the first pass of bias. So I know I haven't attached the other skirt yet, but it is a little bit easier to do one pass now and attach the skirt and then do the second um, thing of bias tape separately. So that's what we're going to do. So just so you understand what it looks like, this right now is the left skirt. The insert is here and we are going to sew bias tape to this edge. And just like we did with the bias uh, on the bodice, we're going to try to find the shorter edge, which is this one. And then this is the one. The shorter edge is the one that I'm going to sew to the fabric. And I want it to extend, so we, we folded that hem there so that we knew how far to extend this bias tape. And we didn't want the bias tape going all the way along the hem. We wanted it to stop where the hem folds. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of extra there, but pin it in place. And then I'm going to pin it in place the entire length of the skirt seam. Trying not to really stretch it as I go. And then all the way to the waist seam. And now I'm going to go to my machine and sew along that crease at one half inch. Okay, so this is very similar to the bodice. We're going to do the same thing. We want to sew. And actually, I just want to trim. You can see my hem kind of a little bit peeking out here. Got distorted when I was pressing it. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra. But just like we did with the bodice, I want to sew it a half inch and down the center of this crease. So it's going to probably mean that I'm going to have to shift the bias over a little bit in order to get down the crease. So I'm going to start sewing. Back stitching at the end. And again, it can be tricky. This step is, step is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to use my little guide here to help me. It's like kind of one less thing to remember if I have that there it, and I can butt the edge of this against that. It's just much more helpful. Again, if you have some post-its, a stack of post-its will do the exact same thing. So I'm going to line up the edge of the fabric with my guide and then I'm going to just sew down the crease of the tape. Trying to be as accurate as I can. Not rushing.
And then as I approach the end, I'm just going to back stitch. Okay, so once again, we want this bias tape to fold smoothly over and to have the edge of the fabric basically perfectly touch that crease. So just go through this, wrap the bias around, and if it's not wrapping because the seam underneath is a bit too long, we can trim it. So it's pretty okay. Let's see how it is here. Okay, here I think I need a bit of a trim. Yeah, it all needs a tiny bit of a trim here just to get it to lay flat. So I'm just gonna use my shears. Just trim it a little bit off, like not, you know, an eighth of an inch. Again, you don't have to do this. You just want to, if it's fitting nicely, if it's wrapping around nicely, you don't need to trim this. I'm just making, making really, really sure. So now when I press this around, it should wrap nicely. Perfect. Okay, so now it's wrapping nicely around. So now what I want to do is just press that seam forward. And I'm going to do this on my tailor's hand so I have a bit of runway. Okay, so I'm just pressing that seam forward. I'm trying not to press the crease. Actually, excuse me, I want to wrap this around and press. Still wrapping. Okay, so as I get to the hem, it definitely needs a bit of a trim in order to in order to cleanly wrap it around. I need to trim a bit here too. Okay, so we'll give that a press. Okay, so in order to cleanly finish this, we could just fold this under, I guess. I mean, I guess you could open this up, tuck it under. That's kind of what we did with the skirt hem. Sorry, with the top hem, we could do that, but we think it's even prettier if you open it up along that crease. I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch right across and then I can turn the entire thing around and the bias tape will wrap really ne neatly around that edge. So we want to get right next to the hem without actually sewing the hem and if you want you can kind of use your finger maybe use a a, a seam ripper or something just to get it out of the way but let me just get my first needle down without actually sewing the hem. And I'm going to sew all the way across without catching my hem. Okay, so if I trim this, actually, let me just make sure it's going to work before I trim it. So if I turn all of this inside out, it basically creates a very nice little edge here. So let's trim this. tuck it all around. And now we've got this bias really neatly enclosing that edge in a really clean way. Okay, so now that we've got that bias tape, the insert attached on one side, we're just going to go and attach the bias on the remaining skirt seam. And remember, when I attached it, it had just slightly extended past that notch. So I'm just going to make sure I'm matching it here just slightly. And again, we're doing right side of the insert to wrong side of the skirt. And this should match the length. And now I'm gonna go and sew this seam at 3 8 using a basting stitch.
And then we are going to attach the bias tape in exactly the same way we just did. Okay, so here we are. I'm just sewing this at 3 8 using a basting stitch. Okay, so I just actually stopped because I could see as I was sewing that I got a little bit misaligned. And this is what causes problems with bias, you know, you know, having to trim or whatever. You really want to make sure these seams are matching up and that you're sewing them correctly because otherwise you're going to have issues with the bias tape. So I'm just going to take a minute and unclip this section and then sew it again. Guess what, y'all? <laughs> we're going to come and attach another piece of bias. <laughs> so now we're going to do the other side. Open up that tape. Find the shorter side. Align that. I don't need to really leave extra at the waist because it's all going to get trimmed off. I've got a couple extra threads here. Let me just get rid of them. and then pin all the way down the seam. Okay, so we're ready to start top stitching our bias. I've gone and wrapped and pressed the bias on the other side, so I'm just gonna show you what this should look like, where you should be. where we've got our bias wrapping around the seam all the way down the center front. And then where the seam, or sorry, the sleeve in, <laughs> where the insert ends, we're just gonna be wrapping the bias around the edge of this fabric, just like we did with our neckline. So what we're gonna do is go back to our machine right now and we're gonna do that first pass of top stitching where we top stitch the folded edge down the center of this one and then down the center of this one once again this is best done with an edge stitch foot. So get your edge stitch foot on your machine and I'll see you there. Okay, so we're back at my machine. I've got my edge stitch foot on. I've ensured that the bias tape is meeting evenly in the middle. And I wanna move that needle position over to about two. For my top stitching, I realized I liked it a little bit longer. So I'm putting it, setting it at three instead of 3.5. And then I'm just going to start stitching and this should feel familiar because we already did this on the sleeves. And once again, I'm like not letting this split. Like I'm using my hands to really hold this together along the guide of the edge stitch foot. And really I'm not even looking at my needle. I'm looking at the edge stitch foot and I'm making sure that's centered. And as I'm sewing, I'm just looking at my edge stitch foot and I know that it's doing all of the work of lining up the stitches for me so I don't need to look at my needle. Oh, I passed it. <laughs> I went right past. I was so in the zone. Oh, actually, no, I ended perfectly. So I ended right at the edge of the insert. I was really zoned out there for a minute. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this on the other side. So I'm going to just move my needle over on the other side. Okay, and this time I'm not going to zone out. So I know I need to end. I'm just going to mark it right about here. And then I'm just going to backstitch. Okay. 
so I didn't backstitch here. I'm going to have to make sure I do a really good bar tack to anchor this. But otherwise, the stitching is looking pretty good, pretty nice and even. And then, of course, we now need to come and do the outside edge. And I'm going to use my edge stitch foot again. I'm going to just go back up to the top. And again, oops, I'm going to move my needle over. As I'm coming down this one, once again, I'm going to look at my guide. I'm not looking at the needle. And I can do this seam pretty quickly using that edge stitch foot with my guide. Okay, so as I'm coming back, remember, I'm trying to make sure I catch the underside of this with my stitching. So I have a couple of these clips. Um, you might have seen Wonder Clips, plastic clips before. This one, I don't know what the brand name is. I got them at a local sewing shop. Oh wait, here it says Magic Clip. I like these ones because you can basically sew, like magic, like if you use a, a Wonder Clip, basically like that's the profile of it. And so you can't get it under your machine foot. But I like these because if I pin it in place or clip it in place, and again, I'm trying to make sure that I'm going to catch it with my stitching, I can actually almost sew, like my needle foot, I'm going to have to pull it out. I'm going to have to pull this out before my foot gets there, the needle gets there, but I can actually sew. It's going to go under the foot. So I'm just going to use a couple of these to try to hold the seam allowance in place and see if uh, this seam because I'm not, it's not like the neckline, it's curved, it's very flat. I'm hoping that I can get this, catch this, and then I won't have to do any slip stitching on the opposite side. But if you don't have this, the other thing you can use pins, or you could hand baste just really quickly. I know everybody's like, oh, hand basting. But if you really, really quickly hand basted this in place, you would most likely definitely catch it. And it would probably end up being faster to quickly hand baste it than it would be to um, slip stitch it in place really carefully and cleanly later on. Okay. Wish me luck. Sewing prayers. We're praying to the sewing gods that we catch it. And here I am saying you could go under the needle and I'm, I'm, I don't want to sew over it. So I keep pulling those out, but. Trying to tuck everything nice and flat. Let's see. And then back stitch at the end. Okay, let's see if our prayers were answered. Oh, looking good. Looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Ooh, that is satisfying. I caught the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a little pat, bat, pat on the back right now. So I'm going to go and do that same thing on the other side of the skirt. I'm going to just finish top stitching on this one last edge. I'm not going to show you on camera. And then we'll come back to do that little bar tack. Okay, so I finished both sides of this. I'm really happy with how the stitching turned out. And I just want to start sew a little bit of a bar tack right here right where my stitching where I kind of screwed up and see if I can I'm going to take actually I'm going to take this foot off so I can see what I'm doing so I want to right where I I think it's going to go down in the middle first so I'm going to put my foot down make sure it's in the right place I actually want to start a little bit back So I'm trying to basically start right where that stitch line is and then end on the other side where the stitch line is on the other side. So, and I'm going to just do this slowly, maybe four or five times. And there's my bar tack. So that's going to just help protect this seam from some of the stress. 
Um, and then we're good. We're good with the top stitching. So the next step is going to be to attach this to the skirt backs. So just before I go and attach the skirt back to this, I just want to come and give this one last press. Just a reminder, anytime you top stitch anything, especially hems and things like this, the way to make it look great at the end is to just come and press it and help lock those seams, anchor those seams. It really makes such a big difference. Okay, so now that all of this is sewn, I'm gonna come and attach the skirt back. And we're not sewing the skirt backs together yet. Like we're not sewing the back to the back yet. We're just sewing them to the side seams. So starting at the waist seam, matching notches. So you're gonna pin this all the way down. And you can unfold that skirt hem. and just finish pinning. And then we're gonna go sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, this is an easy seam. We're just gonna sew all the way down at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I have and gone ahead and attached the back skirts to the side seams on either side. I went and I surged those seams. I trimmed about a quarter of an inch off. Um, if you haven't made a muslin, and I don't know why you would do that to yourself, but if you haven't, I wouldn't finish any seams right now. I would probably um, do a quick base fit right now, try everything on, make sure you like the fit through the hips and the waist. Um, and then keeping in mind actually that there's an elastic waist back here that you can gather. But if you don't have a serger, you can finish this with a zigzag stitch or a bias bound stitch. And I'm just going to go and press this seam towards the back. And then we're more or less done on the skirt for the time being. We're not going to worry about um, anything else until we go and we attach the zipper and the waistband and everything like that. So that wraps up our lesson on how to make the Joe skirt exciting. You now have a bodice and you now have a skirt. This is thrilling. Um, I'll be seeing you in our next lesson when we learn how to assemble the waistband and sew the zipper and finish this project. If you are liking the video in these series, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next lesson. <laughs>